Hello and welcome to Kind of Joe Kakaka. <laughs> I'm Jim. I'm Sam. And we'll get a name. Yeah, <laughs> I haven't thought of a funny little name yet. It's but uh, we are here. New series. New series. Y- we've always done. You, yeah, fully always done. You clicked on the thumbnail. You know what it is. We're going to be going through Avan the Galleon. Yes. Uh, Jim has pretty much consumed all the content of it beforehand. I pretty much. Weekly, I know, weekly, uh, Eva is one of the things where I heard I know so much about it from without watching really anything of it. We tried to watch it back in the day. I think we got through the first four episodes. And I don't remember any of these like, episodes other than the train episodes. The only one I actually remember still. That's literally the only five. thing episode I remember watching originally. It might be episode five, actually. We'll see. So I've seen the series numerous times. Big I, fan. I know a lot from it from just hearing so many people discuss it around me. It's one of the obviously it's one of the most influential anime series of all time. It's referenced in like almost everything. There's so much inspiration taken from it. Yeah. Uh, it just might... to be clear, we're watching the original series first, and we're going to be talking about episodes one and two. Not going to spoil anything past these because Sam has not seen technically. So there's a lot that I know about, though. Yeah. So we're. Mm, I mean, it's hard to say like, oh, we're not going to spoil even going because it's a series that came out like two, what two and a half decades. One of the most ago popular enemies point. of all time that came out like two, two, two and a half two, decades. Yeah, two and a half decades ago. Like it's hard. Like I said, there's, there's a lot that I know about just from like word of mouth that I and like seeing a clip of or something. Yeah, I'm not gonna overtly spoil anything. I'm gonna point certain things out when we get to them. Like yes. I paused a few times. It's very similar to like like a like the Attack on Titan where there's things I knew about beforehand. Yeah. But so yeah, so for this one we watched episodes one and two. And what do you think? What do you think about episodes one and two of Evangelion? Very... Neon Genesis Evangelion. Well, this is last time like I I watched. I watched Shin Godzilla, and going from, you know, watching that, I kind of, okay, I could tell so many like, things he loved from Godzilla films in the past, and I could, like, completely tell, but I think, I like, I like it a lot, there's a lot more interesting stuff that I'm, like, noticing now, like I said, I got, I'm noticing Anos, yeah, ones, I guess. having seen, like, it's one thing to, like, see his other animations mm-hmm. um, before uh, Shin Godzilla, but if you've actually seen Shin Godzilla, like, you will know immediately, like, how distinct of a directing style Ano has. Yes. And also saying we should talk about before we really talk about the episode is that we are watching the Netflix version. Yeah, of so this. The, the Netflix subtitle, the the sub version on Netflix, which is a technically a new word. This was translation. This, this was the part six drama before part six was even like <laughs> confirmed or like, announced. So yeah. So long story <laughs> short, um, just a little brief history on like the licensing of Evangelion. Um, Evangelion. Obviously, massive series, humongously pop, humongous popularity internationally. Um, did actually get shown on on Adult Swim back in the day, mm-hmm. which I didn't even know until kind of recently. But uh, yeah, you had a, so to watch it. I remember you had to either find a a legally to seek website or yeah. buy incredibly expensive DVDs of it that are on eBay for like a hundred dollars. So for I'm sure a commenter can probably correct me, but because I didn't do any research for this, I didn't think we'd be talking about it. I mean, but, we, had, we had discussed like at least the, the uh, version of it. <laughs> yeah. So if I recall correctly, a company called ADV had purchased and owned the distribution rights, uh, at least in America for Evangelion, uh, for Neon Genesis Evangelion, the original series. Yes. And A ADV dissolved, and I think it became like part of something else. It also was so a Gynex the, production as well. It is a Gynex production, yeah. But th- most of the international like um, availability thing have to do with like weird, yeah, like loopholes. So th- it, it like the, the rights owners lost it. I, I guess it re- reverted back to Gynex. Mm. Became very expensive, uh, prohibitively so for any other distribution. Yes. Until out of nowhere, miraculously, Netflix was like. Hey, yeah, it's all going to drop, which this was crazy because <laughs> I found Evangelion in, like, 2014. Yeah. So, so kind of after it had, like, its initial popularity, I guess. Uh, like, well, what I should say is, like. The fa- that like, had, like. Yeah. Like, the, the rebuilds had started being made. Yes. It, it was one of those, those, at the time, like, cult classic ones where you had, like, really dig to go find and watch. Mm-hmm. It, <clears throat> which is kind of in, va- in the same vein of, like, a lot of the Gainax stuff. It was very, like cult otaku sort of thing yes um but ava really like exploded and i'm sure now it's like impossible to take 10 steps without seeing an ava reference or an ava what's like the the razor a gendo razor shik razor yes they're Uh, merchant they're like baseball say merchandising everywhere uh, yeah netflix 
or the Netflix, not Netflix. Evangelion is one of the most heavily merchandised anime, as yeah. far as I know. It, like, to an insane it amount. It is crazy. Some I, YouTuber... They, they made a video about, can you live on just yes. Evangelion? I can't remember who it was. There's some YouTuber that made a really funny video that it wasn't, was like... It wasn't Gygax's wife, was it? No, no, no. no. It wasn't Sydney. Um, yeah. It's a really funny video about, like, how like how you could actually live off of, like, Evangelion branded merch. And it was like, I wake up in my Evangelion... Uh, like my Karu Shinji, uh, red, red, uh, red bard, red bard. Okay, Can you live entirely off of Evangelion merchandise. <laughs> Very funny. It's like I, I wake up in my Evangelion mattress. Um, I, I use my Evangelion toothbrush. I shave with my Shik Hydro Gendo uh, shaver or a razor. It's, it's very funny. But then it's like, and then I have uh, Evangelion um sponsored tofu. <laughs> But it's just like it just shows how like merchandise. insanely space, merchandised the series is. Spaceballs, the flamethrower, space. Yeah, <laughs> it's literally the spaceballs joke, but some ha- but in real life now. And it's it's kind of weird. It's almost like it's kind of the whole thing about like liking something that sells out. Like, yeah, Ava, the original story, especially the the original like series, Nan Genesis Evangelion, I think is such like an unparalleled yeah. work in anime. And see, I understand why it's merchandised, but like. It really like I've seen Ray and Oscar so many times. I've seen them like everybody knows who they are. Yeah. I know who they are. Like I've seen them. them so many times that after a while you just dis you you don't really you dissociate. As- <laughs> yeah, you you don't associate them with the original series anymore, and that's when like they're they're just merchandise waifus. Yes, exactly. They, they've they've they're been not co- characters completely anymore. Completely removed from the context where like re- like those two characters in particular, are some of my favorites in the in the series, the way that they're like characterized. But everything about Ava, I love like the the series incredibly. It's very important to me. And but uh, in the yeah. Netflix one, famously, because because like you know I you heard you see the when it came out the Twitter drama of like the uh, the the subtitles being different, the the voice actors changing as well. Yeah, we're watching, so, the, we are watching the, the the subs, the Japanese. So yeah, there there was a bit of drama in the 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 actual like translation with the dub or sorry with the sub where. We actually won't even get to this until the very end, mm-hmm. almost the specific like real controversy. But um, there's some lines that were changed specifically with Shinji and Karu to make the relationship sound um, more platonic and less yeah, like romantic. Yeah, explicitly romantic. One thing I know is like they kind of have like a it's kind of a gay romance or something. Tea or they, you know like imply yeah, we'll, we'll get maybe. There, there's definitely like romantic feelings between the characters and like there's a lot the, of, the lot. Netflix <laughs> subtitles for some reason don't allude to it in the way that he was a good friend the other one <laughs> that the other ones had in the past and then also interestingly um uh they recast and redubbed the entire series yes and this was like weird because obviously at the time i was super into ava i mean i've always been into ava yes. since i saw it but when i like when that announcement dropped and it was like oh yeah they have made a new dub everyone was like what like why it was crazy because first off like the original 90s dub is very iconic do they so do, but are, it's also like awkward and janky i understand why okay they do a new do, one for like all for the rebuilds do they use the old dub cast for a dub of that um you know i don't really know i okay. don't i actually did watch the last movie in in dub just because i didn't i wanted to like look at the movie and not have to yeah. read subtitles the whole time um and uh but I don't know, because Spike Spencer, I believe, voiced Shinji in the original. And that's, like, a lot of people really associate him with that. I, I knew Asuka's, like, dub voice actor was, like... I think she may come back. I, I think she was the most important Tiffany one I'm hear, hearing about. T- Tiffany Grant is the uh, the woman that voiced Asuka. Yeah. Um, there's also... This is such a random, like, uh, tangent, but there's a really famous or infamous, like, Safe sex PSA. AIDS. The AIDS PSA. Yes, it's an AIDS I, saw, PSA. I saw that on the, the recommendations where I looked up the the like, can you survive? Because that same person yeah. did a uh... um. There. So the the English voice cast for for Shinji and Asuka do like a an AIDS PSA. Have you seen the Yu Gi Oh uh, anti drug one the dub had? I don't think I have or... actually. <laughs> it's like me and my friends stay away from drugs so we can concentrate on the card game. <laughs> oh, that's very funny. Um, um, but so, I, I'm just checking to see if she actually. Uh, so yeah, she worked for um, a lot of ADV. ADV Films is what that company's name. Okay. Was. I just I'm trying to see if she did the new Oscar. I don't think she did, hmm. but yeah, no, it doesn't look like she's really done any work in the past hmm. few years. Yeah. The, so yeah, th- this nef- and like the one th- one little thing I I just want to touch upon now that like, we're watching the first episode at least 
was that the character would start talking, and then like a second or two after they start talking, the the subtitle would pop up, and it was very distracting. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really, I, I should look that up too. I won't right now though because I don't feel like it. Um, I wonder if that that is like totally just a Netflix technical error. Yeah. I don't know how. I. It's funny because like every other anime is fine. It's so distracting in a way, like. Thinking of the hundreds of anime episodes that I've watched and across Crunchyroll, illegal sites, I mean legal sites. Um, <laughs> they try Manga Plus <laughs> or whatever it was. Um, plus. Remember, what else? What else? Like, it, when, Crunchyroll, when, like all these sites, I've never noticed an issue with the synchronization yeah. of the dub. I mean, and this one, it's like, it's so distracting. Yes. And, and you mentioned like, like when Shinji looks at like the postcard that, that Masato sends him, it doesn't translate any of the, the writing on yes, it. Yes, it doesn't. That you had to explain to me like what it says. Yeah. And... There's a lot of little bits like that too, and yeah, whatever. But little character stuff of who this character is just by looking at this postcard. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I guess let's jump in. Like that's kind of a little uh, a little backstory about the Netflix version. Yes. They re- recast your history it. as well. <laughs> uh, you have a little bit of my history too. B- big fan. I love the series. Yes. It's probably my favorite like, anime of all time. Like I know about like all the major characters. I know I've seen like like all the Eve, especially in Gun- looking for Gundam builds. They always come up as like Gunpla models. For yeah, I- I'd imagine. I mean, obviously, I, said, this like, is, I know so much about the series without watching really yeah. much of it through cultural osmosis. Yes, so. But yeah, so just kind of diving right in. Um, also, I have to say, I haven't really listened and to the new dub. I don't really have strong opinions about most dubs, so I, can, I don't uh, really care too much. Yeah, if you, if you have any opinions, let us know. But So we're covering episodes one and two today. So we're kind of doing like, like our Attack on Titan series, where we're kind of grouping up episodes yeah. until we get to like the movie. So these ones I wanted to pair because like I feel like they... It, it's a t- continuation. Yeah, they, they kind of feel like a two-parter. Um, but so yeah, we, episode we, one called Angel Attack, I think. I'm pretty sure Angel uh, Angel Attack's episode one, yeah. Yes. Uh, really incredible intro. I I think the first episode of Ava is like really incredible. Yes. In a lot of ways. So and this is the thing I, I kind of noticed like the first two episodes combined, but like you kind of you kind of see like the empty city. You don't see like, anybody throughout this entire show really. You saw like the TV flash of like a, of like the government, but like you don't always really see civilians at all. And you, if anytime you see like their bodies and never see their heads, so the world always feels super empty. Yes, it's very something, and this is something that will persist through the whole series. And I think it's really interesting. We see Shinji sitting in like the hospital in the second episode. Yes, and it's like there's no nurses, no there's doctors, really. Too many chair. It's like they designed this city for too many people yes like it, nobody wants to live here there are cars outside and everything but like you know, every time you see a doctor too is like when they're like carting ray by shinji <laughs> yeah it's it's actually i was surprised at how many like random let's call them npcs <laughs> they are npcs show up in the first episode there's actually a lot of characters yeah, that are just kind of not real characters that told, show up i told jim we're like okay these are characters i know are characters in here like five or six and maybe like the the one girl that's like shouting out like oh no systems are down kind of person whose yeah, yeah. job is entirely to like, tell you what's <laughs> going on yes and they are proper characters in themselves okay like, yeah well that's like the only one that's like seemed like like a, like a, like a kind of important side like a, like a c-list character i guess yeah there's there's three of like if you want to call them like the pen pen's one of staff. them <laughs> pen pen's also there pen pen's it's gonna be like the flash of here like pen pen he's a, he's important <laughs> i came here too early find pen pen find pen pen he's the key <laughs> Stay. um but so yeah like uh there's this really like the the actual like logistics of uh, Tokyo Three, which is what the city they're okay. in, um, are really <laughs> we skip in Tokyo Two. Well, I know we'll get. That's kind of the whole thing. It's like the world has been like a, an apocalypse has happened. Basically, like the world is like destroyed. Like with the first city that we see isn't t- isn't we Tokyo Three. It's like uh, outside of. Kanto, I don't I really know if there's anything outside of where we're at. Like there we, is. We have like a board of directors, but you don't really know where they're from. Really, they just all have pointy noses and look very like. Yeah, okay, so those are, yeah, those are the guys in the second episode. Yes. Like, we'll talk about the episode one, because, like, the the first thing that happens, really, is, like, we see these, like, in this incredible intro of, like, really quiet, just, like, destroyed city. The angel appearing. And and then we see, yeah, I love the way he just is, like, kind of floating through the water, like, ethereally. Like, probably the two most iconic angels, this is one of them. So. It's funny because there's there's a few that I think of as really iconic, but I don't know. This it's one I think is the most one, so probably the most recognizable one because yeah. But I mean, he just looks incredible yes. too. So this one's called and, Satchiel. And like, after seeing Shin Godzilla, knowing how much Anna really loves that genre, like I got so many like nods, I guess, towards that of like just like the military vehicles lined up taking shot at like an un- indestructible monster that won't be affected by yeah. technology. Even some of the flying ships seem like oh, this is some goofy shit that Godzilla would have, where like 
they get swatted out of the air. It's like the little drill battleship they would have in like a couple of Godzilla movies. <laughs> Yeah, we haven't seen it yet, but obviously there's a lot of Godzilla reference. There's a lot of Ultraman reference. We haven't seen the Ultraman reference yeah. yet, but Anna was a huge fan of Ultraman. Ultraman, uh, uh, Common Rider, Black, essentially, and the first um the first thing that Anna did as like a film is a, a student film uh that was like a Ultraman. It was basically like Evangelion Ultraman. He did it in like the I think late seventies. It's crazy. It's like, like so a, old. I watch. It's on YouTube. I, I think it's also a picture of him just dressed up like Common Rider Black as well, yeah. doing the poses and everything. Yeah, he, Ota- uh, he's a proper otaku. He's, like he's the, great. these are like the guy, like the guys that created what being ot- otaku is. Like, but yeah, so ba- you basically have that that shot of the angel appearing. We we have Masato as we come come to know, like driving around looking for Shinji essentially because she had this file. She's already fucked up. That's the thing too. She's like, fuck, I lost him and a fucking angels attack this is like the worst case scenario and proms tomorrow and proms tomorrow and shinji's like trying to call her i'm pretty sure yeah because he's supposed to be picked up and he's like the only person in the city which is like yeah this is, this is safe <laughs> and then it's just so cool like i love like all the way is it cuts back because basically what we see happening is um we see gendo so gendo is the head of nerve like he's yeah. like this iconic character gendo super iconic and glasses reflect everything he puts his hands on together under his chin essentially and he he's powerless here he can't really do anything like he's not given permission to use his program yet his the evangelion program because right now like the japanese military is like oh no no we got this bro <laughs> you know, and they did not <laughs> they, they seriously did not um but I, I really just love all the scenes. Like Sa- Satchiel is like the one of the coolest looking angels. His the way he attack. Yeah, his name is Satchiel. Okay, are these all named after, after like, actual biblical angels? I think so. I can see that. There's do they have a like... Metatron? Do they have like Metatron? Um, I don't know uh, if there's a Metatron. I only know a handful of their names. Ramael is the is the one that's like the dodecahedron, the square. The yes, flying, that's uh, the other one I I really know that, yeah. the design of. I think that some of them are. I I know a lot of the like sort of pseudo religious stuff comes from like not like a lot of crosses sources. <laughs> there's a lot of, yeah, but like you know how like apocrypha and like there's a lot of things that are like pseudo biblical but not really like actual from the bible like okay. a lot of like the modern depiction of hell isn't really technically from the bible yeah it's not <laughs> so i think a lot of it might be like indirectly related to like religious angels but like <laughs> Like, Satchel and, uh, I believe Ramael is, like, a real angel. But whatever. I don't know. Well, real, quote-unquote, real angel. You know what I mean? Yes. Canonical angel, I should say. All right, this is I should I should I should just look up or read about the specific angels and what they're named after. Yeah. But, <laughs> um, but... but yeah, Masato does the come with me if you want to live thing especially, and they drop away and drift around Japan. And we kind of got to get, like, a little intro to her. Like, okay, that's where we do see, like, he has the postcard from her, where she's, like, kind of being a sexual tease, pointing to her boobs in the sh- in the picture and everything. So that's what I love. So not only did she... What I know she, is that she, she put, is... kissed it, too. Yes, yeah, she's also, like, everybody's favorite girl, essentially. She actually yeah, is the correct answer for best girl. So I think Misato is literally, like, 28 years old. Okay, that's that's midlife crisis age in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to say, like, she feels like the other main character of this yeah, show. Yeah, certainly. So. She's, she really is, like... I, I don't know exactly, like, like uh, Gendo is, like, the head honcho, but she's, like, basically the person that is, like, the, the field director. Like, she's, like, the main director. The, late, the girl on the ground. Yeah, I think Commander, I, I guess that's her name. Or she... I colonel? I thought she was Colonel. I think or she was ca- Colonel, yeah. Or Captain or something like that. I can't, I, she, she's, but she's really the one that, like, is responsible for making, like, the split decisions. Yes. Um. But so, yeah, we have this kind of, like... There, we see like the, basically the military, the JSDF is trying everything they can <laughs> to destroy the angel, and it culminates with something called an N2 mine. It's basically like a nuke or, eight, yeah. or the or the, was it the hydrogen bomb they had in a no, what was it called? The, the oxygen destroyer. The oxygen destroyer. Yeah. Yes. Um. Yeah. This is based the N the N2 mine is basically like the strongest weapon that humans have created. That created. That's kind of like what the it was like a nuke essentially. Yeah. And I, I just love, like, all the little details. It just knocks off, like, all the cameras for a short time. It's, it's like a mix of, like, an EMP and, yeah. a, and a nuke. Yeah, that, there's just so many little details that I, I want to point even, out, but even, I can't. Like, they, I love, like, the way that they have to, like, brace themselves for impact when, like, the shot – when they're in the car and the shockwave is hitting them. And There's also, like, the, the, the to unlock everything, they have to, like, put a key card to get the phone to unlock. Yeah, it's just – everything is so fucking, like, heavy – uh, under heavy surveillance, like one other thing too, it happens a little bit later. So yeah, they they end up like sur- whatever, like the JSCF fails, of course. Um, and then Shinji and Misato have kind of more of a character moment where they talk as they the car flips they, over, they take the car up, and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I love the little things like them flipping the car over and like 
Um, you see that in the back, Misato clearly like broke into several other cars to steal the batteries because their their <laughs> car wasn't working. So she like hot wired like six batteries together, and Shinji's like, "Hey, is that like okay?" She's like, "I'm a civil servant. It's fine." <laughs> She's like, "It's a uh, what's it called? Like a what do even the police have to like." Commandeer. Commandeer, yeah. Let me commandeer your vehicle. Yeah. It's hey, like, hey, again, Apocalypse, it's, it's free game to, to siphon the gas out of fucking <laughs> abandoned cars. And Shinji's just, like, basically weighing over his head. He's just like, oh, what, yeah. what the fuck? He's like, who is this person? Like, she <laughs> sounds like a crazy person. She's the best hope you got. But um, the one of the scenes that's, like, really awesome that I love is where she's like, so you, did you get the credentials your dad sent? <laughs> and Shinji hands her a letter it's like it was was like taped up from behind yeah so the letter was ripped up and then so here's basically what i interpret here so he has this letter am i gonna say like that like gendo was gonna write him a letter then the cutter to change his mind until like he said never mind just tape it up and get it out of the trash and tape it up what i see is um i think so it's funny because like literally all of the letters redacted it's like yes everything but come here yeah like gendo and his name hand hand writes come like, they says, <laughs> he writes come here like literally not even hi shinji i love you he says come here and i think what happened was shinji got that letter and ripped it up oh and then he taped it back up that's what that's what i think happened. kept the key card at least yeah Thank he you. didn't rip that up but uh i just i love that little little detail um <laughs> then we have a moment where the jsdf is like fuck our weapons aren't working satchel is literally the nuke just made him stronger yeah he, like, it's like adapting it also has a like little detail that like it's like two heads now looks like and it has like these weird like i guess like gills kind of thing on his shoulders where it looks yes. like it's like breathing out the shoulders and you can see like little like every little monster detail that i would notice in like shin godzilla where you can kind of see like the little like nooks and crannies of <laughs> especially, especially towards the end of God, of shin godzilla where you kind of see like the tail where mm. you see the details of it you're kind of like I think of uh, what's it called? It, it reminds me of the set of the first form we see of him, where he's oh, got yeah. like those big fleshy gills that yes. spew that like red ooze or whatever. Oh yeah. Um, I I really like it. Can't I can't say this enough? Like all of the tiny little details make the this series so <laughs> impactful, so much it's, more impactful. Like I said, it's like the, and also Shink the, 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 love the tiny details as well with like the all, basically the but they did it with like the government case where every little detail that probably would happen in like a legal thing would happen, mm-hmm. which is interesting. With and the, it's funny in this because they kind of like they're almost like speed running that part where they're just like, all right, let's get the the official government out of the way so that we can just get to the good <laughs> shit. Give us money. Give us money. We're repairing. But so yeah, she basically gets him to the facility essentially, and and the the big thing is because uh none of the conventional weapons work, they have given Gendo uh and and Nerve like the authority to use their new special project. They're and, like the last hope essentially. And, yeah, and on their way they meet a uh, uh, like a new character, with the the blonde haired woman coming out of the pool. Yeah, and, so it's funny because. Misato is literally she gets lost in in nerve. Yes. Nerve is so big it's and like labyrinthian. A, it's, it's a hexagon pentagon, like the version of the pentagon, <laughs> but like six sided. It looked like. Uh, and y- yeah, like literally got lost. And Ritsuko, so she's like, okay, I know, I know a secret trick for getting around this. So she literally calls Ritsuko, and she's like, hey, Ritsuko, take us there. Ritsuko kind of seems to be like her like rival. It feels like more than a fr- like a friend. They kind of butt heads more than they get along. Yes, it's really interesting. Her the scene where she walks in and like. Like, uh, like she like intimidates Misato almost. It's really interesting. It's also like when she's in her swimsuit. Yeah, and she, but she also says like, like I'm not gonna do anything like, later on. She's like, I'm not gonna do anything weird. She's like, of course you're not gonna do it. You guys, it's fucking fucked up. He's like, I was a joke, ma'am. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's funny that uh, uh, Ritsuko would like immediately think like, oh shit, Misato, <laughs> like Misato around a child, like this is dangerous. But yeah, so Ritsuko, we we haven't really seen her too much yet, but she's pretty much like the chief. Uh, science officer yes that's what i guess what i kind of got and another really she has cool... a lab coat jim she does have a lab coat <laughs> yeah um another cool thing too so she's like swimming in this like red liquid and they... which is like what what the uh the eve the evangelians yes. are held in yeah and they call it bacalite which is a real thing but i don't know if it has like liquid properties i think they can like harden it i think that's the point but it's it's just this cool like red liquid i just <laughs> love that it's, su- it's super sick looking <laughs> Also, yeah, because she has this, this like, a, like it's so funny. She had a lab coat on with like her swimsuit underneath. It's really funny. I like that. Masato a lot. just has like like a like a skinny dress, but like, she also has her her iconic red jacket as well. <laughs> yeah, and she has her her uh, cross, her cross. Uh, yeah, they love th- they love their fashion with the, at least those women before they get to like the schoolgirl outfits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so we basically I guess when we get the this is probably one of the most fa- the famous thing that I know about, which is just the guilt Shinji into 
into be getting to the robot scene yes. where you know we get gendo appeared saying like yeah shin you gotta get in the robot if i called you here you know that's all i care about and i just love too like like no one has ever heard of an evangelion like evangelions are so top secret that they they can't even be mentioned like with amongst the staff so they they suddenly like sees a giant robot yes you also and see his daddy so he's going through a lot of stuff you also today. see then when they go down into the facility you kind of see the other city like the upside down city it looked like oh yeah so you do see tokyo 3 under un, upside down or well so like parts yeah. of the city go underground where parts of the maybe the more abandoned city is just like not yeah we see um in the second episode we like, actually it's like 15 see years what since an angel attacked yeah so so like not to go too much into like all the backstory that hasn't been explained yet but like clearly like a cataclysm happened yes 50, as you said 15 years since an angel attacked so they've rebuilt this city in a way to like make it more like secure to angels and it's like a cool system where they can like lower all the skyscrapers underground during the attack and then raise it when it's like good time yes which is super cool looking super iconic yeah yeah, so you get the famous scene, uh, you get, we kind of get a we kind of get the idea of Gendo, where he just like doesn't really give a shit about his son's more of a, like a means to an end. Literally, yeah. So he's the only one that could control the the robot that that we don't know why or how right now. Like he's they say he's like compatible with it, and basically Misato's like very she's like the one that's like, kind of hesitant at first of trying to guilt him to go into it right away, but she kind of like it because it, it, she it, didn't know. Yeah, she, she, didn't, she know. didn't know that this was what Gendo's plan was, and she's like. <sighs> There isn't really much of a choice, Shinji, like, and I feel like she's probably the only person that Shinji would honestly listen to at this point now, because, like, I guess the little adventure they had, kind of more of a bonding experience at that point than anything. Yeah, they had to Other survive than, like, a nuke together. He's like, yeah, we, like, this is the only way, and then, like, he's like, okay, since Shinji, you won't do it for being a little pussy, <laughs> I'm gonna wheel out Ray we'll to get Ray in it. Ray do it again. So we're just running, while well, she has an IV in her in a hospital bed, like, there's no physical way she'd be able to do it. I'm gonna use the like, Operation Guilt Shinji into doing it. Like, this surely would have killed Ray. Like, if they made Ray do this, if she fucking would have died. <laughs> She almost fucking died that you knocked out her because the angel shoots her at her facility and like knocks like some shit at like down on Adam and like Ray falls down and then Shinji's about to get crushed by like, rubble and that's when the Eva automatically reacts and saves him like it and it reacts the way that he does yeah. like the he same puts his hand, hand like, that he the, uses the, the, the stupid thing like oh no I'm putting your hand to try to block whatever about to crush you yeah and but, yeah it, it protects him too and another shot I love too one of the piece of debris that get knocked by the Eva flies right towards gendo and it smashes into the, the window bull, the bulletproof yeah, window the, the, the debris bulletproof window that he's behind just a great shot and gendo is like it looks happy yes he's yes like, yes good sick weirdo saying it <laughs> there probably is like a, like a fucking version of that with gendo there, there must be <laughs> um but yeah it's just uh he, he picks up ray she's bleeding everywhere she's like wincing at, not and this is this is the thing that really like drives shinji to say fuck it i'll do it i'll get in the fucking I'll get, robot I'll get in the fucking robot and he does and he gets he gets the the cockpit fills up with water it then disappears so they say lcl sure so they say it's lcl You're sure there's a lot of terminology uh that we're gonna go That's, through okay um, so it's like an orange-ish liquid it will it will pump the oxygen into or get oxygen in your blood so you don't yeah. have to like breathe i guess i was always so horrified by this because like you have to like allow yourself to almost drown and, and then you also just again like, talk in it as well though yeah and then we see uh we see more machine porn there's so much like machine porn of like, like, like things get, getting set up like he gets loaded in there through like a tube in the back yeah the, like the neck i it's... love the way that the the back of the ava like opens for that too it's a really cool like it just everything is so well thought out mechanically um and then it culminates into one of the also coolest things where they have this like elaborate system of like high velocity elevators that they literally just like lock the avas into and shoot them up like through a pipe mini game where like the passage is different for wherever they go it's really yeah. funny so and then you see like like basically like the cuz the city has been constructed this way it is allowed for them to have like elevators basically anywhere. Yeah, you come up in the middle of the highway as yeah. we saw. It's like they've prepared for like any possible like area for the angel to so, attack through. So yeah, I don't know what their plan was because the verba gets up there and Shinji just doesn't know how to control anything and gets his ass like just beat, like his arms get broken. So you could, they kind of like mentally, like psychically feel the pain that the Eve. Because because this is one thing I knew, but before was that like, these Evas are like creature or like, actually organic life. Yeah. Because you see that in the second episode, but like, yeah, yeah, and I was like, okay, and they have like a weird like Pacific Rim psychic connection <laughs> with like everything, and yeah, he, he gets like his arm broken, like that fucking shot through the head and everything. Another thing I think is really funny is like Ritsuko, Ritsuko's reaction to him taking one step is like 
she can't believe it. She's like enamored by how she like she's so happy and surprised that he took one step when there's like literally like the most no training. dangerous like horrifying threat to mankind ever. Because what do you say? It took like seven months for for Ray to be compatible yeah, with for her. Ray to even sync with it. It took her seven months. And like Shinji took a step, I guess, one epic step. Yeah, and they say like the synchronization rate is like forty three percent, which was, doesn't sound good, but they, thought, they're all like, "Oh my god, that's incredible." They also said like uh, it was like what is like nine zeros. The, oh, well, that was uh, I think they were saying that their plan for success was like zero 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 one percent or point zero zero zero. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, they're and Mit- Mitsuda is like so basically that's zero, right? She's like, oh, no, it's not. It's not zero. There's still a chance. Zero like, nine. Um, but yeah, and then we kind of Shinji gets fucked it up, he's shot in the head, and that's what kind of blacks out, or, or kinda, well, it starts the next. Uh, yeah, the actual the the episode ends like right as they're facing each other. Yes, like, and we kind of see. Yeah, we, I think we, next episode we do see it, it gets ass beat a, a little bit, and then Shinji gets shot in the head, and kind of cuts to the ho- to the uh, hospital room, the all white room, all empty, no one's really keeping an eye on it, no one's like, watching him to make sure he's all right yeah it's, everything is so like isolated and desolate and like such a isolation is a very heavy theme it's a yeah. it's so it's just so unsettling to me the idea of like you're living in like the city where you're trying to save the world and there's like nobody there <laughs> like uh, another detail too that i always love especially in a hospital where like, s- after a monster attack yeah no one's there. yeah exactly uh, another detail later is at Misato's apartment, you see outside, like, every, you see, like, all the apartments, and hers is the only one that has, like, any outside furniture on the <laughs> balcony, presuming that she's the only one that lives in this apartment complex. Yeah, should be. That's, it's very interesting. And her, I mean, her roommate is a fucking penguin. It's true. We'll get to, we'll get to Pen Pen. But, uh... Yeah, so basically, we kind of cut the like, Shinji kind of like w- waking up and like tr- they basically they do say like his memory's fuzzy. We see like the head of the of Eva One being picked up. Like basically, a bunch of construction crews are working right now. Well, so what did you think? Did you think that he like lost during this? Because it's very unclear. No, like he lost. Because I rem- I do remember that Zero One goes berserk, and I fi- and they mentioned that it was like a victory. Yeah. And like Shinji's gonna be. They do mention that a couple times beforehand. I'm like, okay, this is when he went berserk and like killed it in a way i remember that because yeah the whole episode basically happens and then at the very end we get like the resolution to the fight yes um but i really i think this is also a really fantastic episode just the way that it is able to like give us more time with these characters and tell us so much about them like misato is probably one of the most fleshed out oh, yeah. characters <laughs> in like an anime that i can think of yeah i definitely got that she seems like she, like she puts all we see how she like presents herself in episode one and then we we see the real her in episode two, where she's like very sloppy. She's she, she, she very like doesn't understand. She like, comes off as childish of like, hey, I'm not old. I'm a I'm a u- useful girl just like you, Shinji. Yeah. <laughs> she she like has empathy for Shinji because when she hears what's gonna happen with after he gets out of the hospital, um, and that like they they basically have a conversation where they're like, oh no, like Gendo and. Shinji cannot live together. Like, like, they haven't not... lived. It's been three years. They last saw each other, and they only know how to not live together. So, yeah. like, Shinji's like, "Oh, I don't mind living alone. I'm used to living like, being isolated." And she's like, ah, "Fuck that fucking sucks." No, he's living with me. So yeah, she has like a little guilt about it. So yeah, she has Shinji, but I feel like she does it for herself too. Maybe because Maybe she's just... she just likes attention. Well, at, she does say that like at first I did it as like a selfish a selfish boo in it, yeah. but then I kind of like did it for him kind of because he i felt sorry for him but she was like how gendo is i feel like the moment when he like wouldn't step in that should be like a wake-up call to her like oh this kid's fucked up like there's something seriously wrong with this kid i mean she she worked she worked with his father she she should know how fucked up like <laughs> he could possibly be and yes yeah, so could we, we do some flashes like him seeing ray at the hospital again for a quick like quick meeting of that we also have like ray flash like a shot of Ray Fox in front of him, and he's in the city, remember? In the very beginning of the... Yes. We saw that. That's a very important scene, actually. Yes. I, sees, I do remember, I, if it, but I think it's going to happen, then I think I know why, but can't say. Because I know something about the ending. <laughs> okay. But yeah. Um. But yeah, so yeah, basically, she, she invites him to live at her apartment, like you said. There's just beer bottles everywhere. Not even just beer bottles. She has like hard liquor. There's like malt liquor, yeah. Whiskey like, bottles. It's like disgusting. It's like putrid. She just has Cause, like because she brings everywhere. him with them to like shop at a corner store. Like I said, we don't see, like, see anybody. It's just a shot on like Shinji. But, like you see a body of like two people walk by, and that's it. Yeah, and they basically are just talking about like, oh wow, we need to fucking move out of this place. 
<laughs> uh, but yeah, and also another thing too, like Misato, she doesn't know how to cook. It seems like her yeah, idea dinners. of the celebration is like, oh yeah, we'll just get like like a microwave food, like TV dinners and beer. Yeah, she's she's just like extreme. Not to like <laughs> say that it's wo- like women need to know how to cook, but coming from like this that time period and like Japanese like tradition like it, every anime ever always makes fun of girls when they can't cook because girls should not have cooked yeah that's always so, a running joke in every persona game and it's not really it's not even a joke here it's just showing like that she's not really adjusted like she's an adult but she can't cook like she doesn't really have the time to anyway it's, yeah she's her job her, her job is her life like as you said too when we're watching like they do everything like they have to go out on site where like the fight took place because they see like, body they, destruction they see at, like ground zero and like hazmat suits like every you have to do like every job like 20 jobs at once yeah, and it's just like, I don't know. I I like Misato a lot. I see her as like a semi aspirational character mm-hmm. because she is like a girl that has got it done. Like girls get it done. Girls get it done. Um, she, <laughs> she's hashtag girl boss. She's like she's super young, but she's like she has like a like a super important. Jim, position. she's like our age. I know that's the thing. <laughs> that's, that's what blows my mind. Like I think about like I could not do what uh, Misato does, but it's also like fuck that she has to do so much because it's like too much it's like yeah nerve is like weirdly understaffed in yes. certain ways <laughs> you're like doing 10 jobs at once but you guys can be a lead scientist and also go for a swim <laughs> <laughs> well she i'm I sure know. she had a i'm sure she had a reason to write that I, off i know just really funny though it is very funny they just wanted to put a girl in a swimsuit but yeah so and she's kind of like the sexy one a little bit sure for that fetish one of them yes <laughs> well I mean, they're all like like drawn sexily i guess you could say but i mean yeah masato just has her boobs shaking like there's a lot of masada boob action especially in her like casual outfits it's very funny there's a lot more like funny little character faces than i remember (laughs) in episode one i feel like that the show kind of drops that a bit (laughs) there's also this is such a random detail that i only noticed after watching like 10 times the scene when like the door the elevator opens and in episode one and ritsuko shows up there's like little like weird action lines that come out of uh Mis- or out of Misato as surprise like surprise lines. Yeah. And it's just weird because the show doesn't really do that often. Like Shinji makes the funny face later when he's uh caught with his uh pants down, but Yeah. I mean also that there's uh, that moment when like basically they're, they're going to explain like the the I guess the living situation or whatever where like the, she's like he's like with Misato at the elevator. And, he, and his Gendo's there, and he just, like, see yeah. him, like, look down, and Masato kind of notices that. Uh, that's why, like, okay, that's why he has to live with me. He cannot be alone or live with Gendo. Yeah, I, I love that scene so much, because it's, like, I don't know if you've ever had the experience of, like, being in the, a, an elevator with your boss. Or there's always an awkward scene where... Oh, God, my, my, yeah, my, I don't have an I don't go in an elevator for I my feel job. like I, I, my, jobs, I, my job experience throughout, throughout the years, I've had times where, like, it's you're on an elevator with your boss, and it's really awkward. And, like, this is... Normally they're like, come on, like they'll be like, come on in. And with this, like, Gendo just looks fucking angry. It looks like he's just blocking. He's so massive, he's just blocking the entrance ways. He couldn't get in if he tried. Yeah, he's he's mean, and he just won't even like talk to Shinji. He's like, <sighs> this is the first time him and Shinji are actually face to face, and he won't even talk. There's to probably him. something of Shinji reminding him of his wife, and that makes bad blood or something like that. That seems to be the common the common thing for that. Yeah, <laughs> remind reminding someone, a ch- you know, the, the father or mother remi- being reminded of of their uh spouse mm-hmm. is uh can also it's a good it's a, it's a common character motivation yeah of hatred <laughs> one thing i think is really funny too is like how much shinji looks like gendo like yeah. i think that uh, gendo really does look like an adult shinji to me like if shinji just got aged up <laughs> which i think is like i don't know gendo is such an iconic design he looks so different from like any other like adult anime guy in his same kind of like menacing role you know yeah Gendo is really fascinating character. Yes, uh, there's so much going on. So, so like you said, uh, so at the uh, little apartment, they, they Shinji goes to take a bath. He sees his butt. We do see Shinji's butt, and that's when at the bathroom comes the fucking penguin. I knew, I knew of the penguin. I knew Pen Pen Pen, pen, pen. is there. But it's funny because his little name tag says Pen Squared, which I've noticed recently. Apparently, is like a Japanese ism, where there's like a uh, What's what was the other thing? Oh, in um, uh, Code Geass, uh, the one girl, CC, her name is written C two, like C C squared, C squared. And there's another movie I watched recently called Jellyfish Eyes that had a character named like Pon Pon or something that was Pond written squared. the same way. And I was like, it's easier. Yeah, well, it's just such a three, weird, three letters are hard. It's like a weird little quirk. I don't know, but yeah. So Pen Pen's here. He's a he's a, a roommate. S- he's a, so- a South American. What is Misato South. calls him like a sauna penguin or something weird. 
It's it, yeah. So he's just like he's a very intelligent penguin that knows how to open doors and take bat showers. He's just their friend. Dr- yeah, I don't understand it. He's a little sure. pack on his back. Stupid. There's there's kind of a reason for him Better to be, be. there. <laughs> You're not gonna like it, but there's kind of a reason. Oh god, he's gonna be the perv. <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's it's more like it's more subtextual than it is like ever brought up. But we'll talk about it. But and basically, the uh, because Masa- Masato also like. What's it called? What's, what's the word? Try because like she's very cat. Like, when Shinji comes up, like why they're fucking penguins, he's completely naked, and she's like very casual about everything. She's not like, whoa, you're peed this kind of thing. She's like, yeah, just pet pen pen. He lives here. He's a roommate. He just he's here, and be like, oh yeah, she kind of cover yourself up, and she's like, maybe I was too casual. You'll find that yeah. weird. So yeah, it seems like she's kind of that... putting on like a front for him. Yeah, or she, yeah, she or she doesn't really know how to interact with. People. Naked, naked boys. Well, people in general, because like you, you see how she interacted with like two of her coworkers, and it's very like awkward. Mm-hmm. Or at least again, there's like you can't really interact with him. And and what's her name? She's had like Ritzko. a Ritzko. You have she's a butt heads with, and not a really good relationship, I guess, yeah. with her. And we haven't really seen her interact with like Ray or Asuka at all. So that, that I yet that I've seen. Yeah, it's yeah. We're we're still pretty early on, but it's uh, I really like the picture that they start to paint with with her, like. Misato is already like given so much. She's gonna be like a, like a big sister character to Shinji, it seems. Because mm-hmm. they gotta say, you know, you can't flirt with the boy. <laughs> That's but... not the boy. Mm-hmm. I I think there's something really cool about Misato as a character because like she is kind of reflective of like that otaku kind of like not... pixie ma- manic pixie dream girl. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say that at all um she's like immature in a lot of ways but she's also like hyper proficient in a lot of other ways like she's incredibly good at what she does yes but she's also extremely yeah like juvenile and she just drinks to fucking get wasted (laughs) uh which hell yeah relatable (laughs) hashtag life goals um but yeah uh so yeah and then that's when we kind of get to nighttime jinji listened to his uh walkman is Sony Walkman. We also see a Mitsubishi car. Which oh yeah, is yeah. There's a there the trucks that Nerve uses to get to the site. It's really Mitsubishi random. Logo. But uh, I think it's Mitsubishi. So, yeah, it was. Uh, so yeah, Shinji's like listening to, it, but he definitely kind of remembers what happened and everything. Uh, yeah, this scene. I love the way it transitions into this because you hear like a pounding, like a dull pounding, and then it cuts to like how Satchel was like using its cool like stick arm thing it's like a jackhammer pound. arm essentially yeah. and it, it goes right back into the fight like it didn't miss so basically beat. like the the eva gets shut down but then it just like goes berserk and it go- wakes up on its own and just like destroys the, the angel and that's but, and shinji's like completely conscious during this entirety not like he blacked out yeah we he just repressed it like yes as as they they kind of talk about it like there's this fear of him having like psychologic damage or something like mental psych- damage or something they say like something like psychologic infiltration um misato's like worried about it and the rich goes like no 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 there's no it's just uh some like weird ptsd shit <laughs> she doesn't say that but it's essentially what it is like this is ptsd he's, for he's, Shinji. he's just coping yeah and yeah that's when we see like it was berserk it just fucking just rips it just like destroys the fucking angel this scene's awesome so we didn't really talk about the fight too much you you, you mentioned how like its arm gets ripped off it destroys um, like the little like red chest core essentially. That part is awesome. I I love the way like I love the berserk Ava moves. Like I do the love way his mouth it, opens and it like yeah. roars and everything. The way that it like uh it rips out its ribs, its exposed ribs, and starts plunging them into the core is really fucking cool. Yes, and then basically like after they kill it, like Shinji sees like the organic eye come out of it, and kind of realizes it's a fucking living thing. And if that's what causes the trauma, essentially, not anything else. Yeah, like, the, the idea that there's, like, he's, like, inside a creature, and the creature, like, looks at him. Like, their eyes meet, and it's, like, this weird connection. It's, like, totally an alien creature. Yes. And, yeah, he screams. And then we have a great scene where Misato basically, like, comes into Shinji's room, and she's like... Don't touch him. He's a hero. <laughs> Uh, she, she she's basically like Shinji. Like I didn't tell you, but like you did a really good job today. Everybody's like, gonna view you as a hero. She's so giving him like praise, like something that no one has given. Shinji literally went through like the most horrifying experience, <laughs> and people are just trying to act like normal around him. Like they just want to dress it. At least like Misato is kind of saying like you did a good thing, Shinji. People are gonna people are gonna look at you differently now because of that. But Shinji he doesn't even think of that. Like to him, like the lasting experience is this memory of seeing this horrifying creature and like having this mind expanding knowledge of 
being involved in this horrifying project that he can't even comprehend. Yeah, we don't even know much about it, honestly. Like, right now, anyway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot that's still uh, being unveiled. But I think these are, like, great episodes. I love the, also, the classic Scream to Cut to Black. Very good, Evangelion. Yeah, it, but also, we get some mention of some names, I think, that... that Misato... So, the name was, like... They mentioned Eva Zero. Yes, so there's a U and, Zero. And, the, what's it called? U, Yusuke? It's the same with a U. Like, the character... Like, not the Y, I mean. They, they, they mentioned a character with a name with, like, a Y. Uh, was it the Mardat University? Maybe. Or Mardak group or something? Mardak group? Uh, they mentioned, like, like, a character name of, like, someone who, like, trained before of, like, Kisuke or... I don't know. I've Kisuke read... is a character, but he's not... <laughs> <laughs> Someone mentioned like Ken's a fucking like why like a why the character name was a why, but it's probably not important. Oh, whatever. Uh, but yeah, and that's pretty much it. Um, it, it ends. Uh, and yeah, Shinji's a little he's traumatized. He's traumatized. Still no, don't know much with Ray. Still not much with us. No Asuka yet. No Asuka. Yet. You'll be surprised how long it takes for Asuka to enter the series. She's like the most like fucking marketable, marketable yeah. character. It's it's crazy Jim, how does, late when she does enters. Mari show up? <laughs> she doesn't. <laughs> I don't know who that character is. <laughs> but yeah, uh, Evangelion, I love it. I I'm still catching new things on rewatches. I'm glad. <laughs> uh, how, so you you liked you liked them? It, you, it's, 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 it's better now. I think watching it than it was like back then. Now that your brain's expanded and you've gained less, 100 IQ points, less to be like a stupid idiot about. But now I'm actually, watching this, and actually having to pay attention to it for you know podcast sake helps out <laughs> as weird that is to say but yeah, yeah. It's, it's so far it's so good but you have to seen like shin godzilla i can kind of like seeing the little things that he likes from like uh like, like the, the whole tokusatsu genre and like yeah. kaiju genre it's like it's interesting to see all of them come into play in like his like magnum opus essentially yeah i would say so not to talk too much about the rebuilds now but i'm not a huge fan of the rebuilds I pretty uh, that's not that's not a that's not a controversial take. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I think a lot of people really like them because I think uh, they see them as like the the Evangelion that was coming out when they were getting into it. So they're more they're invested in that. Mm -hmm. Um, I did really enjoy the last movie that just came out, with like a, a huge three, caveat. Three though. plus one. Yes, Evangelion three point oh plus one point oh. Fucking sake. Thrice <laughs> upon a time. Fucking Kingdom Hearts bullshit. <laughs> it really is. Um. But yeah, we'll talk about that. I guess we will watch the rebuilds eventually. I do. I've really been wanting to rewatch that last rebuild. Well, we have we have twenty twenty six episodes, end of Evangelion, four rebuild movies. So. That's a lot. It's fucking a lot. It's too much. Yeah, maybe the uh the final the the three point plus one point movie has like an incredible first act. It's like so good, and I fucking loved it so much. And then the rest was okay, I guess. But <laughs> the first act was incredible. I couldn't believe how much I loved it. <laughs> um yeah fascinating you will when you see it you'll be like oh i understand why i didn't like this <laughs> but anything else to say then um not really uh mm. i'm excited to watch more of this um we'll probably watch three next time i think we're getting into the ray arc next okay uh i just had the episode list up and um, there no the description of, we're gonna have the white-haired boy actually no we're gonna get um his friend or whatever the ray arc actually isn't until the next batch after. Okay, so this is like the white-haired friend arc, I guess. I forget his name. White-haired. The the, uh, the the kid they had changed the dialogue for. Karu? No, no, the car doesn't come in yet. Okay, because the description said like, oh, his friend. Toji. Toji. Toji's his friend. Um, yes. Yeah, you'll see. You'll see all the fun classmate characters. Oh, class. oh yeah, I forgot. There's a school in this now. They have yeah, schools. he got. He's a transfer student. <laughs> transfer. Just like every other anime. Sure, and horrible place I should go to city, go to school at. Yeah, I think the classroom's pretty empty too. We'll see. I'm excited. All right. Well, say we got a, like a new thing. We still have to think of, have to think of a stupid name for this. It took two episodes to get a fully coolie name, so it could take. Who knows how many? Who knows? All right, we'll close up the AT field, Sam. Oh yeah, we never got the AT shield about the bullshit AT shield that's just there. Oh, I can tell you what that means. Go um, ahead. AT field stands for absolute terror field. Okay, so it's gonna be like Angel something. No, nope, it's absolute terror field. Absolute 
basically terror. It's basically I don't want to explain too much, but it's basically like a thing that like angels can do. Yeah, it's, it's, like it's just super, the shield. Yeah, it's the reason why like the weapons can't hurt them. Yeah, much. that's what they said. I was like, yeah. I was wondering what it was stood for, and he never say it. Ava loves to just drop terms and never fucking spell them out or explain them. <laughs> you just have to like, it's kind of like Dune in that way. Like, yeah, it's like the, it's the Tenkaichi Budokai tour in the, <laughs> the shit. D- Dune is like that too, where Dune just constantly drops uh, random terms. Well, Dune actually did come with a glossary, so that's hilarious. It is very funny. The big Dune, the pocket Dune dictionary. <laughs> All right, well, uh, the denuary. Yeah, so if you want to close the AT field up, sure. Uh, thank you all for checking it out. The first episode of this should be fun. This is gonna be a little bit longer than the fully cooly ones, but uh, not as long as the Attack on Titan one. No. But uh, yeah, thank you all for checking. That was it. a lot. That was so many fucking episodes. Put your thoughts, thoughts, co- comments about eva gellion i guess sit down there yeah like let like, me know if you're interested in watching more of this um like describe i don't know when these are going to come out and what rate um but we'll see i guess we'll yeah we, we have to have a day where we do it we think we do this uh what's it called uh uh Attack on Titan where we just had a day where we just watched this all but yeah, did nothing we... but that and <laughs> but now it's five family done and we have time hopefully for summer anime comes yeah but i look forward to some of the future stuff like we are probably have some chainsaw man content we, i'm really excited we're still for covering uh jojo uh, demonic heartbreak still mm-hmm. every two every two chapters we cover it kind of works better like that like check that out and then uh you could follow the podcast on twitter or be a gym separately where i think jim has been streaming persona 3 i've been streaming elder ring on my end and been fun for both of us doing this and uh you also can uh what's it called follow join the podcast discord uh, my brain is go. frying i know it's so hot in this room it's, it's very so hot. hot day here in the far away land of Jer- new jersey three new jersey three <laughs> <laughs> we're actually kept under the boardwalk of the jersey shore yeah <laughs> that's, that's why it's so hot all the we, i'm surprised we have to get like, art of this fucking podcast where we did Tackle titan where we're just like in the eva like suit <laughs> Oh, I would love that. Little plug suits for, for our avatars. Yes. We're oh. in the, it's like the frame, the the cut frame of like both of us like in the suit. <laughs> <laughs> or it could just be like you in the pilot seat and I'm like the fucking Evangelion with like the cap of Evangelion. <laughs> or your pen pen. Or, no, do not make your <laughs> pen pen, I swear to God. And with that, we'll see you next time. What, what we do episode three to five, I guess? Three and four we'll do next Three and time. four? All right. Yeah. All right. We'll All right. see you next time on Eva Cast. I don't know. What the fuck. Eva Kaka. <laughs> yeah. Eve Kaka. Ka. <laughs> it should be Joe. S- jo- uh, Joe cubed. Joe cubed. Joe Ka cubed. Oh wow! It will be Joe Ka cubed. <laughs> or Joe Dash Ka cubed. Like a weird, like fucking Evangelion name. Ka plus three point <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs>